Hey, welcome to video 23 in our van build series. Today we're going to review and install Carp Your Eyes newest 2022 9-inch wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto car stereo system. I have never publicly reviewed a product before. However, as good as this system is, it isn't perfect. I'll share with you what works, what doesn't work, and why we decided to keep it. Let's get started. I'm not going to do a full unboxing here. I will share with you that the unit does not come with a camera and I'll show you the ports on the side and what they're used for. From left to right we have power, we have USB, we have audio out, camera in, the card slot, an external microphone, and the power button. So this is the 9 inch Carpy Ride and um, we have had it for about two and a half, maybe three weeks, and we've decided to keep it. I actually have it mounted in the Camry right now. Uh, as you can see, it's way too large for this vehicle, but our, uh, we're not going to have the van on the road uh, for the next month or so, so I wanted to test the system. Now, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't have any intentions at all of doing a review on this, but I am going to keep it, and uh, this is not a perfect system. So I thought I would take just a couple moments and show you what works and what doesn't work. Um, so this is how it comes up and uh, I'm going to do the negatives first. So the voice navigation control does not work inside Google Maps. Uh, I'll give you an example. So we go into iPlay and here's Google Maps and I do a search and I hit the microphone Take me to Canadian Tire. And that's all I get. Where if I do it inside the um, iMap or whatever you call this thing, the, the iPhone map, and search. Where would you like to go? Canadian Tire. One option is Canadian Tire on Daniel Street South. Is that the one you're looking for? Starting route to Canadian Tire. So that's Head a, northwest on John Street North. <laughs> so that's a pretty big miss uh, in my opinion and I have talked with them about that and they're going to see if they can uh, do a, a firmware upgrade or, or something like that. Now um, the Google Maps works. It works just fine but you can't talk to it and tell it where to go where of course on your phone you can so let's get out of this actually I'll show you how easy it is to add a stop as an example uh, let's go here where would you like to go McDonald's one option I see is McDonald's on Baskin Drive Baskin Drive West your next stop is McDonald's in one kilometer, turn left onto Madawaska Street. So, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that, uh, to close it down, end route. And you can use both at the same time. There's Google Maps there. Uh, let's try it right now so you can hear what it sounds like. Hit the search. Uh, recent searches. Let's go to... Head south on John Street North toward Ewan Street. So like a, just like the, the iPhone app, uh, Google Maps works extremely well. Uh, incidentally, we use Google Maps all the time because unlike the uh, iMap or whatever they call their product, we can download uh, maps for offline use. So when we're in the States, we're not using any cellular service, yet we can still use this. I'll give you an example of that as well. So that's a big miss, in my opinion, is voice control. Uh, for Google Maps. And we'll exit this one and we'll go back, get the home and back to home. Uh, the unit's volume control is insufficient with Google Maps. We're actually not using the unit speaker right now. I have the uh, the FM transmitter 
Here it is right here. And I'm using 107.9, so it's talking to the car stereo. Works exceptionally well. Uh, but the point I wanted to make is uh, inside, let's go to iPlay, inside if you're using maps, uh, the internal speaker in here works okay. You need in a camera, you need volume 25 out of 40. Uh, for Google Maps, you need 40 out of 40. It still isn't enough, and the speakers are all crackly because you're maxing out. Uh, so, in my opinion, the speaker in here is is crap. And again, they need a firmware upgrade or something to make the volume for Google Maps work uh, internally. Having said that, it works extremely well with your FM both the Maps and the Google Maps, and it also has an auxiliary out so you can plug in if you don't want to use an FM. So that's the first two things. Maybe I'll give you an example right now of using Google Maps offline. So I'll turn off uh, cellular. Okay, cellular is off. And of course, when cellular is off, you lose your voice control for everything, but Google Maps still works. But to show you this, let's turn cellular off. Let's try doing a search. To do that, you'll need to be online. Okay, so we are offline, so I can't do a search. Let's try a, um, a gas station. And again, uh, there's nothing available because I have no cell coverage. However, let's go to our friend Google Maps, and uh, let's go back, and let's see here. Let's search for something. Uh, search. And let me see, I can go, let's go use the keyboard. I don't know, try pizza. So I can't reach the internet, but you can see it's, we can navigate to it right away. And off we go. And that was an absolute must have feature. Because uh, we're in the States, we're not using cellular, we're just using uh, previously downloaded maps, and it works perfect on here. So I'm going to turn cellular back on. You want satellite view? Boom, satellite view. Just super. Jump out of satellite view, and we're back into normal, back into maps. Okay, so here's what I like about the unit. Quick and easy setup. Literally, you plug it in, pair it with your phone, and you're done. I like the size of the unit. Clearly, it's not made for a camera. It's way too big, but this is perfect for our van. It's going to be sitting right up on the dash. It connects quickly and easily to our phone. Uh, the FM, let's go back to that for a minute, so uh, here, home, FM. The FM transmitter works really well, and uh, oh, we also like the auto brightness. I've got that turned on right now. Yeah, and so it is adjusting the brightness for the amount of daylight. It works fantastic. I like that a lot. I find that the navigation is okay. Uh, this is your, your main there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that we haven't used or touched or like equalizers and we didn't buy it for that we bought it for maps and the backup camera and I don't have the backup camera hooked so I can't give you a demo of that but I will have it running yeah, shortly within this video anyways we spend all of our time if we had an Android phone we would be in here and it's not hooked up and so you're getting this message but it is hooked up to my iPhone and of course you have all your apps here uh, what else we like is uh, when you get a text, it pops up and you have an opportunity, it'll read it to you. It's done, it works really well and you can respond to it. And same thing for WhatsApp, if you get a message, it'll, um, it'll pop up and, uh, and you can actually compose a, a WhatsApp. Do you want to read your messages, send a message, or make a call? So I got th three unread messages, I'm not going to read them. I'll cancel. Uh, but anyways, that works really well as well. So navigation's good. I like the clarity of the screen. Uh, the responsiveness it seems to be uh, pretty good. I mean, it's like don't don't kid yourself. These things are uh, it's not as good as a tablet. And I'm going to say the overall construction feels uh, well. It's a plastic. It's a plastic piece of hardware. 
Um, I'm pretty happy with it though. I think it works pretty good. And of course the whole thing's wireless. So you do the one time setup and when you turn your car on it's up and going and uh, you know, assuming the phone is somewhere with you in your pocket or, or whatever, this thing's worth it. Uh, this thing's working. So, I have talked with Carpy Ride. Uh, there's actually people working there. They respond to your emails. Um, seem like a, a reasonably good company. I like their product. It's not perfect, but we're going to install it. I have chosen to remove our rear center marker light and use this location to mount our backup camera. This location works well for two reasons. It will provide a good view of what is behind us and we can use the LED lights on the camera to illuminate the area at night if needed while camping. For this reason we will not be connecting the camera to the backup lights but rather have an independent switch to turn the unit on when we want it on. I quickly made a mounting plate out of a scrap piece of aluminum to reuse the mounting holes of the marker light. That way we're not drilling new holes in the van's body. The camera did not come with this unit and I have provided a link to the camera in the description. Oh yeah, he's got it started. Okay, well, isn't that slick? All right, so? Although I'm pretty proud of myself here, uh, you'll find out later I installed the unit upside down. The dash comes apart super easy. None of what I'm doing here is necessary. I shared earlier that you can plug this unit into your cigarette lighter and you're done. I have chosen a more permanent solution. The radio unit on the ProMaster literally just pulls out. One antenna to disconnect and one multi-port plug. That's it. The ProMaster clipboard is removed with two torque screws. Here I'm quickly manufacturing a switch housing. We want to be able to use this display and the camera when the engine is not running. One of the things that I wanted to do from the beginning was to use the, uh, the backup camera as a security camera. Um, so not just for backing up, but for maybe for changing lanes and uh, even for monitoring things at night. And uh, that meant that I'm going to have to have a, a remote way of turning it on. In other words, the screen and the backup camera, uh, I can turn it on at any time. The engine doesn't have to be running and the vehicle does not have to be in reverse. <clears throat> so I need two switches, uh, which I'm currently in the process of manufacturing the housing for. Uh, one will be a switch which will turn on the backup camera and the other one will be the switch to turn on the, uh, um, uh, the screen. And uh, so I'm just working on the housing right now and uh, it looks to be about uh, five degrees um, working on a cover plate which is going to go down the inside and this looks to be about five degrees it's not square so I have set up the, uh, the table saw for five degrees and I have just cut this sleeve down I'm going to take another sixteenth of an inch off it or so and then test the fit and come back and but this is a neat little uh, jig I put together <clears throat> it allows me to cut material without um, well, which isn't 90 degrees to the fence. Essentially, I can make any fence by uh, changing this, uh, 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 changing this, and this is all just a big wooden square that I have something clamped to. So I'm going to give it a go right now. Well, this took a little longer than I had planned, uh, but the manufacturing is finished. Uh, so I've still got uh, room for a cell phone or a wallet, and uh, I've got uh, the location now for the two switches. So just got to uh, sand and then put down some black paint, rivet in place, and uh, I can get on to the next project. There's six connections, three uh, to each switch, and I have four wires. One is a uh, ground, which goes to the top terminal on both switches, and its only purpose is to provide a, a circuit for the little tiny bulb in here. And if those bulbs, if that illumination bugs me, I'll just unplug it. The switch will still work. The other is a power line that goes to both. And that's uh, this one right here. So this 
This provides power to both switches. And of course the remaining two coming from the center pin, this one and this one are the uh, ones that become activated. So the screen is now on, the backup camera is now on. Okay, it looks like the backup camera is upside down. Yep. Here I was focusing on pointing it in the right direction and I still haven't realized that it's upside down. Okay, now I'm flipping the camera. In my opinion, this is a miss on the part of CarpyRide. It would be really simple for them to use software to flip a video vertically. They do provide a horizontal flip within the software, but not a vertical one. And it took me almost half an hour to flip this camera. There, that looks better. Okay, back to installing the screen and switches. If you're curious, our aftermarket stereo is a Clario FZ105BT digital media receiver. We didn't buy it, and I don't know anything about it. It just came with our used van. It seems to work okay. So here's the finished installed product. I think the two switches look great and are easily accessible. The backup camera is almost instant. As soon as there's power to the camera, it takes over the screen regardless of what menu you're in. The camera itself has very bright LEDs on it, making backing up at night a breeze. And as you can see from this video, although it's not as clear as daytime, you can clearly see if something's behind you. Although this camera angle is low, I think this display is perfect for the Ram ProMaster. Your seating position is high and the monitor does not obscure your view of the road at all. Hey, thanks for watching.